Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see ASME Section 8, Division 1, Suggested Good Practice, Regarding, Piping Reactions and, Design of Supports, Appendix G. We have, all these courses available, on our Thinkific platform. To learn, more about these courses, register with the link given, in the description. Now let us talk about the non-mandatory appendix G. You know, mainly I think you might have not seen these appendixes. If you just go back again to the code, you will find the mention of these appendixes in UG 22. Okay. So many times we just ignore, we, we don't notice these non-mandatory appendixes. So now what non-mandatory appendix G talks about? This is about the support, you know, the support which we are uh, like reactions from the pipe or reactions due to a uh, skirt which is coming to the pressure vessel. So some guideline related to that. Okay. Now what it talks about, so you might have already following this mean diameter of the skirt. Okay. Shall be matching with the mean diameter of the shell. Okay. We follow this philosophy as a thumb rule, but we never realize from where it is coming. So that is mentioned in non-mandatory appendix G. Okay. So uh, Seth is asking what if it is clashing with nozzles. So if uh, you're saying Seth whether in, uh, internal is clashing with the nozzle. See if as a mechanical we don't decide the geometry neither the position of the internal. Okay, so internal support has to be there where there is no nozzle. That is part of the process. Okay, as a mechanical, we don't change the elevation or the even the orientation. Orientation may be with piping, we can shift. But the elevation of the nozzles are very important with respect to the process which is going to happen in that. Okay, so by default, all these things will be coming where there is no nozzle. Okay, so we have to always avoid right so generally that will not come to us as a mechanical that we have to decide where that location of that internal is okay if it is fouling we can always point out see this is fouling and we have to change either of it okay either the no nozzle elevation or the support okay great now let us focus on mandatory appendix G. so first point the mean diameter of the skirt should match with the mean diameter of the shell. Okay. Saddles, this also we always follow that saddle should be at 120 degree support minimum. You know? 120 degree support should be provided to the shell. So it should extend up to one third of the circumference that is what is given in quotes one third of the circumference of the vessel that means 360 divided by 3 so 120 degree so from there this 120 degree support you know one uh, we always follow that saddle support should be at least 120 degree angle from where it is coming this is the clause from where it is taken okay this is the guideline given by code any attachments which are subjected to cyclic loading. Okay. So we always be very careful with the attachments. Now, which kind of attachment it may be, you know, we may have some agitator mounted on the pressure vessel, right? So if agitator is mounted, agitator will always try to give cyclic loading to the equipment. So we need to design for that cyclic loading also. We also find the reference of 107 to 97. We always wonder you know, that we do that local load analysis, local stress analysis with WRC. But where the code is calling WRC 107, we always think that it, it is coming from, from Section 8 Division 2. No, in division one also it is mentioned that if we have a local loading, we should refer 107, 297 
or PD5500. PD5500, which is a British code that also gives a similar requirement to calculate the local stresses. Thank you.